and welcome to Mr. Barton's autograph video number 31. Now just before we move on to the world of 3D vectors, I wanted to have a look at a couple of ways that you can actually make the study of vectors in two dimensions a bit more dynamic. And this also leads quite nicely onto a little activity that you can try with your students. So let's have a look what I've done here. I've got, I'm in standard mode, I've got rid of my key and I've just made my axes a stretch from minus 14 to 14 on the X and minus 8 to 8 on the Y just as we've looked at um, loads of weeks ago. So set up your page like that. And what I'm going to do first is create a vector just as I did last week. So I'm going to go into point mode and I'll just whiz a point down here somewhere and I'll just right click and I'll get vector. But instead of putting an actual numerical vector in, I'm going to use some constants. So I'm going to put A in and I'm going to put B in. Now Autograph defaults any constant values to be 1 initially. So when I click OK, I'm going to get a 1, 1 vector, which is there. But now, of course, the beauty of this is I can use a constant controller to change these vectors. So at the moment, a, and the value of A is 1, but I can nicely increase the value of A and have a look what happens there. And likewise, I can increase the value of B and have a look what happens there. So that's quite a nice dynamic way of controlling your vectors. But there is another way. So just close that down. I'm going to just drag around there and delete that. Another nice way of creating vectors is to just do it via two points. So I'm going to pop a point here and I'm going to pop a point somewhere up there. Now, the only thing you've got to be careful here is the order that you select the points. So first select what you want the tail of the vector to be, so give that a little click, and then select what you want the nose of the vector to be, give that a little click. With both of those selected, right click, and somewhere down there, there it is, create vector, and you get a lovely vector there. Um, now you might be thinking, what on earth is the point of that? Well, this gives you a whole new degree of flexibility, because now you can drag the nose of the vector and change it around, which is going to be very useful for what we're going to do in a minute. So I'll just pop that vector there, and I'll just create myself another vector down here somewhere. So a point there, and a point there. Uh, select mode, I'll have that first please, then that one. Right click, and I'll do a create vector. And what I'm going to do now on this right hand side of the screen is I'm going to create some combinations of these two vectors. So I'm going to do this exactly as we did last week and then I promise I'll show you what the point of all this is. So let's pop a point here and the first vector I'm going to do is red plus blue or A plus B. I think again I'll do my dodgy writing. Call that A and call that B. So let's have a look. I've got that point selected. I need to select vector A. Um, sorry, I'll select that point again, I need to select vector A, it goes black, select vector B, right click and hopefully I've got add vectors there. Now what's nice about this is, is that purple vector is defined by A plus B, so if I change A a little bit, A plus B also changes, and likewise if I change B a bit, B, A plus B also changes as well. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a series of these combinations of vectors on this right hand side of the screen. So whilst we're on a roll we might as well have A minus B. So I'll just pop a point there. And again the order is important when you're doing subtraction. So I'll have my point selected. I'll have A selected. Just wait till it goes black. There we go. There we go. Right click and we'll have subtract vectors. And if you want to move them out of the way, just grab the tail of them and they'll be fine. What I also want to do is get a bit of 2A on the go. So let's uh, pop a point there. And again, let's remember how we multiply vectors. Select that point. I then click on my vector and I right click and I should get multiply vector. And I'll have a factor of 2. That sounds good. So I'll have 2A and just move him down there. And what I'd also like is a dodgy one here. Let's go for B minus 2A. So let's just pop a point here. I've got my point selected. I'll have B and I'd like to take away 2A. So let's right click and go for subtract vectors. So I've got a load of vectors there. And I'll tell you what, just to complete the pack, let's go, let's pop a vector there, uh, sorry, a point there, and let's select vector B and let's right click and let's go for the negative B. Now again, you're probably wondering what on earth is the point of that. Well, I thought this is quite a nice little starter activity for students. Show them vector A, show them vector B. Don't show them how you've created these vectors. And then say, OK, I'm going to change vector A and watch how the others move. And I'm going to change vector B and watch how the others move. And through a kind of process of logical deduction, can the students actually work out how these resultant vectors have been produced? So I thought that's quite a nice kind of dynamic way of looking at 2D vectors, and it's time for 3D next week. Hope that was useful. See you soon. Bye-bye.